Rahidi, uh. who's, a, who's a literary individual. It's quoted here and there. So is it sufficient to say that, you know, we can't rely on this because we have a guy named Aban ibn Abi Ayyash in the chain or that Sulaim didn't exist? According to Hussein Mudarasi, Sulaim obviously didn't exist. Obviously. Didn't. Obviously. Those are his words. Uh, and he sort of elaborates on that. He has a book called Tradition and Survival. Mm. I have a PDF. Very it's a very expensive book. I have a PDF. And uh, he he thinks that the Kitab Sulaim has authentic material in it, but it's a, it's a document of very early Shiism. And um, uh, overall, though, it's, it's not a reliable document. There are various indications. And, and, uh, and so, so in the end, he will make an argument. If you don't agree with him, you make an argument. But in the end, you have to recognize that your conclusion is not yaqini. It is vanni. It is vanni. It is suppositional because, because or conjectural. Because as opposed to his. Because in history, oftentimes, this is what a lot of the average person doesn't want to hear. And why when people get up on the minbar, they just throw all this under the table and they just present something as facts. Because what are they going to do when it's an oratorical ritual exercise? Well, the fact is that in history, we often cannot know for sure. And we have before us a task which involves us balancing probabilities, not even in a mathematical sense. There's not an equation. There is an element there where a person exercises individual judgment or ijtihad to come to the conclusion. And to say that there is no element of personal subjectivity in such an exercise is itself a subjective conclusion. Mm. You must be mature enough to admit that, that your conclusion is not 100% certain, but that's the best conclusion, it's the best explanation that you have, you think that fits the configuration of facts before you, because the facts also uh -huh. are not, they, they are propositions which are not... Uh -huh. Now what would you say to these people that, you certain, know, which are not certain. That, that kind of look down upon people who come towards religious, you know, judgments? And they say, at least with science and the empirical method, we can verify things 100%, whereas when you do your ishtahad or your historical judgments, you know, you cannot come to certainty from that. You know, at the, some level, it is a personal opinion, whereas the scientific method can be verified. What would you say to people like this? And usually, you well, know, I these statements need, I would are... need a concrete example. Oh. You give me a concrete example from science. I mean, for example, if this... Because some of the things they say are just matters of convention. Huh. Water does not boil at 100 degrees Celsius. It has been defined to boil at that. No. It's a convention now. No. Because there will be various things which will affect that. A lot of people have done experiments. And if you say, well, water boils at 100 degrees so you have to be very specific. You have to say, you know, pure water... Uh, to these conditions. At one atmosphere of pressure, oh. you know, boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Huh. Um, but then there are other things uh, such as, um, for example, let's say they make simplifications all the time. No. Um, they make simplifications all the time. I mean, Newtonian physics is only good within certain parameters, right? At, at velocities near the velocity of light, it isn't. But they don't. They they don't recognize or understand that there is something separate from the empirical world. This is the problem. That's, uh, huh, that is something. That is the problem because they think that everything is reduced to the empirical and so they have a, they espouse a kind of radical empiricism. Uh -huh. But if we ask them what is the notion of physical law which you are employing and where does that come uh -huh. from? That is not an answer. That is not a question which can be answered by science or the scientific uh -huh. or the empirical that, that's method. What I, I say to these ask people, a scientist what uh -huh. is the natural law? Uh. You don't have a scientific method to explain what that is. That is a metaphysical question. Uh. So what is known as scientism uh, commits this kind of, a, I would say, philosophical fallacy in which there is a reduction, a claim is made to the reduction of all reality, or the claim is that the contention is that all reality is, is empirical. Mm -hmm. And that if it's not empirical, if it... They may say it doesn't. They, they may not go as far as to say it doesn't exist, but it, it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, it's meaningless to talk. I mean, they about. often say, you know. And, so uh, the notion of God is a meaningless. Uh, it's a faith. It is a matter of faith, and uh, whereas everything else is, you know, verifiable. Yeah, I think that's an oversimplification. Uh, anyway, that's I mean, I, I always say to these people that philosophically, you can prove the existence of God based upon rational principles, which are as self-evident as something central. Like, for example, the law of non-contradiction is something which, you know, a sane-minded person can't reject 
Just yes. as he cannot reject what he sees with the eyes. Very true. Very true, yes. If one uh, rejects the law of non-contradiction, no meaningful discussion is possible. No. The Muslim logicians call it Umul Qadaya. Mm. No. So that concludes our philosophy, our logical discourse for today, our course on logic. Alhamdulillah. So let's take a break now. Let's turn that off. Uh -huh. Reshelve the books. Turn off. <laughs>